Carbon Nuclear Information and Resource Service for organizing the Carbon Free Nuclear Free Rally and Contingent and this People's Climate March. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being here early and getting this day started right. Alliance for a Green Economy is a coalition of grassroots environmental, social justice, and anti-war organizations working together for a carbon-free, nuclear-free New York. We are so honored to be here today, standing shoulder to shoulder with you, to call for the energy future we know is possible, the changes we know are necessary, and the action we know is urgent. This is going to be a celebratory and positive day today because there are so many thousands of people here and thousands more on their way to take a stand for climate action, to take a stand for our communities, to stand in solidarity with communities across the country and across the globe. Today our actions and the connections we make will breathe even more conviction and energy into our movements. We will move ourselves today, and we will move others, and that is why we are here. But before we celebrate, I want to take a minute to remember and recognize the crises that brought us here, the sadness, the fear, and anger that many of us feel as we face catastrophic climate change, as we face terrifying nuclear threats, as we deal with the economy that doesn't provide basic needs for so many here and around the globe, and as we confront war, racism, and environmental destruction. It can be very difficult to know so much and to care so much and to feel so little power to change the things we know we need to change. We should keep in mind that these feelings of despair and frustration are shared even when they are not spoken by so many others who aren't with us today. Sometimes these feelings move people to action, but sometimes they prevent people who would otherwise be with us from feeling that they can make a difference. And that is why the carbon-free, nuclear-free vision is so important, and why mass marches like today are critical. Without a holistic, positive vision, it can be very difficult to make the changes we know need to come. The powers that be, you know who they are. The frackers, the nukers, the mountaintop removers, the drillers and spillers, the corrupt politicians and their cronies, the warmongers, the international corporations stepping on people and destroying ecosystems all over the globe. They, they want us to think it is futile to act. They love it when we get into the kinds of conversations I'm sure many of you have had. The kind where you try to shut down a dangerous old nuclear reactor and you're told, we can't close that nuke because then we'll have more coal. And don't you know coal kills thousands of people a year? And when you try to close a coal plant, they criticize you because they say shutting coal hurts jobs and those plants will just be replaced by fracked natural gas. And don't you know natural gas will poison our water and contribute to climate change? And when you try to ban fracking, they tell you, if you don't frack, we won't have economic prosperity and energy prices will be unaffordable. And don't you care about all the people who, who can't pay their energy bills? What about the water? Everywhere we turn, they want us to feel we are confronted by only bad options. It's a maze of poisons they have us in, and that's the way they like it. I don't know about you, but I am so sick of being told to pick my poison. Let's get ourselves out of this conversation about which terrible choice is worse and work together toward a renewable energy transition that protects all of us and meets everyone's needs. As you will hear from later speakers, a carbon-free, nuclear-free energy system is not only viable, it's the only thing that makes sense. And researchers are lighting the way forward for how it can be done. This vision is real, it is feasible, and it is within our reach. We can and must rapidly transition to a 100% renewable energy system. We can and must close existing fossil fuel and nuclear plants and the infrastructure that feeds them. We can and must take gasoline-driven cars off the road 
and pull natural gas powered appliances out of our homes. We can and must replace these with energy derived from sustainable energy sources, storage technologies, and demand reduction through conservation and energy efficiency. We can and must fight for energy democracy so that we the people make our own energy choices and take the power back from those who got us into this mess. We can and must fight for social, racial, and economic equity in this transition so that we create a inclusive and just energy system. This transition has enormous potential to improve public health, provide jobs, lower energy costs, and revitalize local economies. But even so, we can and must avoid negative impacts on those who currently rely on the dirty and dangerous industries for their livelihoods. We can do this through proper planning, community leadership, and resources allocated to ensure fairness. This is the vision we need if we want to pull people out of despair and into our ranks. I'm not going to ask you that when you leave today you take your eyes off whichever polluters or exploiters you're fighting against or the specific solutions you're fighting for. But I am going to ask you to remember this big picture and weave it into your work. Find ways to stand in solidarity with those in every part of this multi-dimensional and diverse movement and work together to help people see the bigger picture for what is possible. This is how we can collaborate and how we can win. Thank you so much for marching today. I can't wait to lift my voice with all of yours. Give yourself and life a chance to save all nuclear bombs and plants. Or you can bend right over, put your head between. Goodbye. If we don't close in your mind, kiss your ass goodbye. Kiss your ass goodbye. Kiss your ass goodbye. If we don't close in your mind, kiss your ass goodbye. One more time. Kiss your ass goodbye with harmony. Kiss your ass goodbye.